Jesus was at a wedding and folks was getting nice at the wedding. They was getting nice. They were drinking and they were celebrating. It was a party. Somebody say it was a party. There's a word for you corny Christians who at the wedding you so holy that you can't even shake a little bit and the music is nice and you so whack you want to pray over, over the cheesecake. I mean, give me a break. Uh, help me out here tonight. There was a party going on. Jesus was invited and they ran out of wine. Somebody say they ran out of wine. Listen, officially the party's over. If the wine is done, the party's done. Amen. It was embarrassing. The governor was at the party. was like, oh, my God, we ain't got no wine. Somebody said, hey, hey, go talk to Jesus' mama. Jesus, uh, they said, Jesus, hey, talk to your boy. Uh, we seen him do some things. We, we, we going to need a little hookup. I mean, what's, what's going on? We, we ran out of wine. Jesus told him, go take these water pots and fill them with water. Now, I want you to understand, Jesus is making sure that there's wine at the party so it, the party does not stop. <laughs> see, see, you, you messed up right now because for some of y'all, this is very uncomfortable for you because as a Christian, you shouldn't be enjoying festivities and you shouldn't be having a good time. I sh did not say you ought to be at the club poking your behind up in the air, twerking and acting crazy. But there is a time for celebration. And if you're there, amen, you ought to celebrate, amen. There is a time that it is appropriate to dance. The Bible says to everything there is a season. Now don't let me catch you coming out the club twisted and wasted, amen, got liquor on your breath, getting behind the wheel of a car going crash and dying. No, I didn't say to do that. But there is a time, amen, for celebration. And Christians, we ought not to be corny. Amen. You ain't to be the one, amen, who's always having a prayer meeting over a stick of gum. It is not that deep. Relax. Take a deep breath. It's a joke. It's funny. Laugh. Can I bless you here tonight? But at the same time, as a sanctified believer, you can't laugh at every joke. Some of the stuff that is said is so outrageous and so inappropriate. As a believer, you got to say, I'm down with the funny stuff. But when you go in this far, I can't go there with you. I'm trying to get y'all to understand, and your pastor and your preachers are trying to get y'all to understand, you can't be in every situation. You can't be up in every situation because when you are a believer, when you have experienced the grace of God, there is a responsibility on you to live a holy and sanctified life. This is hard for some of us. I know some of y'all are tuning me out in this message because you don't want to hear that kind of Christianity. You want a kind of Christianity that allows you to do whatever you want and say whatever you want and act the way you want and dress the way you want. I dare say if you are a believer, amen, being a believer ought to govern the way you dress. Okay, let me... Normally, we start attacking our women. Let me deal with the men first. I'm going to get to y'all later. <laughs> Brothers, I, I know this is hard for you, but, but the Bible says, uh, here it is. This is the word of God. This is not me. This is the word. Whatsoever ye do, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. I have a hard time believing that God is glorified, amen, when you look like you just got out of prison. When your underpants, your, when your pants is down, it's gotten so ridiculous to the homies are wearing the joint around their knees. Like, you mean to tell me that God is really glorified when you look like a man, a knuckle-headed Negro, your pants all hanging down, your underwear is on, what is that? Not every style is for the believer. Then let me flip that thing the other way. Some of our brothers, amen, your joints are so snuggy. <laughs> till all your glory is being revealed. And the sisters is out here struggling because they love Jesus. But God help me, all of your glory is on display. Come on now. I get it. We want to be fashionable. We want to look nice, but come on. You've got to understand that even though, now God is not concerned, overly concerned about your dress. You ain't going to hell because of the way you dress, but it does compromise your witness, though. Huh? 
Brother, when you got the muscle shirt on and all your pecs is showing and you got the tight joint on and to the point where if you got a cell phone in your pants, we know exactly what model it is. Come on. We want the sisters to clean up the way they dress, but brothers, we are here wilding ourselves. Baga yo coincé nan pantalon, bon Dieu, bon Dieu pardon. Si nèg lan pa ka même marcher, même li go téléphone nan derrière pa ou ka wè téléphone nan plaqué sou mes amis. Come on, man. And then sisters, y'all 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 be ha- y'all be having a stress. It's hard out here in the summertime. Cuz y'all be on some other stuff. Your glo- your sh- it's falling out the shirt. Your, 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 your posterior regions. We can't, I mean, we be having a car accident. Oh! I'm trying to get you to understand, listen to me. Even in the way that you dress, you ought to be a sanctified believer. You can't wear all kind of messages. I see some of the believers two middle fingers F you on the shirt and you a believer? Come on. Let's get practical here. And see, this is a hard message because we want Jesus, this is the crazy part, right? We want Jesus to save our lives. We just don't want him to be Lord over our lives. Huh? But the lordship of Jesus means that he has the right to reign and rule over every aspect of your life even down to your diet. God don't get no glory when you're putting so much grease in your body, your cholesterol is off the charts, and high blood pressure is killing y'all. Some of y'all are holy except when you eat. I'm trying to get you to understand this thing called sanctification. God wants holiness in every part of your life. Some of y'all, y'all are great when you worship, but when you talk, it's terrible. Bouche ou sale. Ou ap adore mon Dieu, mais avec même bouche là, ou ap dérespecter mon. Avec même bouche là, ou ap di bêtise. Est-ce qu'on sauve? Parce que si on sauve, il faut marcher dans la sanctification. Il y a de certaines paroles qui ne peuvent pas sortir dans la bouche. Okay? See, this is the kind of stuff that we don't preach no more. Because we want to tell everybody, you can say anything. You know what always messes me up? Some of these rappers, right? They say all kind of foul stuff in their music. They defile and degrade and demean. And then they want to get up there on the award ceremony. I want to thank Jesus, my Lord and Savior. He was Lord, but he was not Lord over your rap music. He wasn't Lord over your video. If he's Lord, he's Lord. Over everything. I'm talking about sanctification. Somebody say sanctification. Sanctification. Okay, let me get into this message. I'm going to give this to you, then I'm going to leave. Here it is. Let me put it right here. Sanctification is a non-negotiable. If you're going to talk about sanctification, we're talking about defining it. Sanctification, the act of making something clean or holy. Another definition for it is to be separated or set apart in Christian theology. Sanctification is understood as the act or process that happens after you accept salvation in the person of Jesus Christ and believe that by his sacrifice, his character is credited to you, which means that God declares you to be what he is. Is, and that is holy. God literally works through his power and sanctifies. Somebody say sanctifies. sanctifies. Okay, now here it is. I want you to get this. I'm teaching tonight. This is a deep message. Sanctification, here it is, is the work of a moment and also the work of a lifetime. Okay, I need to teach now. I need to teach. Au moment qu'on accepte Jésus, no même moment ça allait sanctifier. God sets you apart. Listen to me. At the moment you accept Jesus Christ, at the very instant that you accept him, God sets you apart for sacred purposes. But now watch this. Not only does he sanctify you in the moment, but then he spends the rest of your life making you more like him. So it's an instant declaration with a lifelong manifestation. Now, uh, let me help somebody here. Just because someone is still struggling in their sanctification does not mean that they're not sanctified. Let me speak to the gospel police and the spiritual FBI who think that it's your job to be watching people's lives to declare who's saved and who's not saved. You don't know who's saved and you don't know who's not saved. 
That is not your job to declare who's saved. The day someone tells you that they can tell whether or not you're saved and they declare whether or not you're saved, tell that person, I'm scared of you because you are more godly than God. Only God declares who is and who is not saved. Can I preach here tonight? But on the other hand, we can tell sometimes when you're having struggles with your salvation. Because if you are saved, there are certain ways you just cannot live. If you are saved, there are certain ways you just cannot be. If you are saved, there are certain things you just cannot do. If you are saved, listen to me, there is a mandate on your life to walk in holiness. Somebody say holiness. All right, let me teach this thing tonight. Let me teach this thing tonight. Sanctification. Another way to understand sanctification is to think about a divine construction project that is taking place in your life. Theologians say that sanctification is both the work of a moment and the work of a lifetime. At the moment we accept him, we're sanctified, we're set apart for holy use. Now watch this. Those of us, you ever watch construction in New York City? Let me see those of you who ever seen construction going on in New York City. Okay, let, let me put you up on game. You don't ever just walk into a piece of property and decide you're going to build on it. Before they build on a piece of property, they have to survey it. Somebody say survey. In other words, they look at what's going on on the property. They look at what's going on underneath the property. They take soil samples to know what's underneath. Because until you know what's in there, you can't build on there. Are you following me here tonight? Until you know what's underneath. Oh, I feel like preaching right there. Because some of y'all are trying to get married to people and you don't know what's underneath. Mm. Can I preach right now? I'm scared for some of y'all who are getting married because the things that pass for men and women, you don't really know today, do you? With all of this genetic manipulation and, and, and sexual identity transitions, you... you, you, you you got to give them some tests nowadays, don't you? I, I feel like I, I, I'm thinking about this. Uh, Lord, uh, give me the wisdom to develop a genetic test that let me know if they man or woman from the jump. Can I preach? You prick them a little bit, look at the test. Okay, now we know you legit. Amen. But here's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Before you commit to people, you got to go beneath the surface. You got to know beyond what's going on. Can I preach right here tonight? Okay, so when you're building something, you don't just build on it. You got to do the work of getting down into the foundation. Somebody say the foundation. All right, we're talking about this divine construction project that God is doing on our lives. If you've seen a construction project, number one, it takes great amount of time and it takes great amount of energy. Time and what? Energy. Now, if that's true in the physical, it's more true in the spiritual. Because in order for God to get you back to where he needs you to be, in order for God to transform you from what you are to what he wants you to be, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take work. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to take work. Thems you aswe abye nebe. Pour nous apprendre gain patience. Parce que gain de moun yap développé, mais yop a développé avec même vitesse avec l'autre moun. Are you following me here tonight? We don't all grow at the same speed. This is a word for those of you who are so judgmental that every time you see somebody make a mistake, you're ready to write them off and cast them out and put them out of the church. Can I preach here tonight? We're real good for that, aren't we? Somebody gets pregnant, amen, and we want to kick them out of the church immediately. But the truth of the matter is, God is still working on them. Somebody say, God is still working. Bon Dieu, pourquoi vous finissez avec vous? Pourquoi vous mettez vous dans l'église là? Vous ne pas bien aimé? Parlez avec vous, travaillez avec vous. Parce que bon Dieu, pourquoi vous finissez avec vous? Somebody ought to say amen here tonight. In other words, we're growing, but we're growing at different speeds. And we're growing at different levels. This is a word for the church to understand. Not all of us are having the same experience with the Lord. Be patient, because before you met Jesus, you were a knucklehead too. Can I preach here tonight? Have you ever met those so super sophisticated people who now don't have no patience with nobody else, but they just got saved two weeks ago? Am I preaching right? Two weeks ago, you was a hellion. Two weeks ago, you was crazy. Two weeks ago, you was messed up. The Lord just fixed you up. You ought to be patient with other people. Somebody say be patient with other people. 
Okay, we're talking about this excavation now, this work that God is doing, this building that God is doing. Listen to me, listen to me. Ephesians 2, amen, God lays out a blueprint for those of us he's working on. When a construction company tries to build on a site, they do evaluations, they do studies. The general contractor knows what he's trying to build. Well, ladies and gentlemen, God is the general contractor and God is working on us. Somebody say, God is working on us. And so Paul declares in Ephesians chapter 2.10, we are his workmanship. Somebody say workmanship. Okay, now watch this. The word that I want you to understand here, turn to your neighbor and say poiema. Look at your neighbor and say poiema. That is the Greek word for workmanship. Poiema, workmanship. Here it is. And it refers to masterpieces. This is God talking now. You are my masterpieces. Can I preach here tonight? I may be messed up, but I'm a masterpiece. My skin may not be as smooth as I like it, but I'm a masterpiece. I'm a little round in the midsection, but I'm a masterpiece. Can I preach it like I feel it? Somebody here, you got to understand that no matter how messed up you are, you are still God's masterpiece. God is still working a miracle out of you. Come on, I wish I had a church here tonight. You ought to declare to somebody, I'm a miracle in the making. My hair may be nappy. My hair may be missing. My hair may be borrowed, but I'm still a masterpiece. Somebody ought to say amen tonight. Okay, that's what the Bible says. We are his masterpieces. We're his masterpieces. God is building us. Now watch this, watch this. The first thing we've got to understand in the process is where God has brought us from. Our experience. Understand? We've got to understand our what? Okay, listen, listen to me and repeat after me. I am. I am. I am. Nothing. Okay. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't all that. Okay, no, 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 help them because they don't believe you. Some of them don't believe you. They start to, mm, mm. no, no, tell them, neighbor, you are not all that. Well, pastor, how can you say something like that? What gives you the audacity to declare that? I didn't say it. Here's what Paul says. Paul says, amen, but at one time you were dead in sin. That's Ephesians 2 verse 1. He says, at one time you were under the influence of Satan. That's Ephesians 2 verse 2. Uh, he says, at one time you were controlled by lust. Ephesians 2 verse 3. Uh, you were under God's wrath. You were pagans without God. You were separated from Christ. You were without hope in the world. In other words, as great as you are, you are not all that. They're going to let our new That's because they're my bye. Some of us are still struggling with our salvation. Can I get a witness here tonight? Yes. By the way, if I, if I had time, I'd preach. You ought to be humble when you remember how crazy and dysfunctional you were and God still put up with you. Yes. Can I preach here tonight? Yes. Some of y'all who are impatient and intolerant, you ought to just take a look back over your life and remember the hell God brought you from. And you ought to say, I thank God, amen, that God saved somebody as miserable as I am. Is there anybody in here who can give God some praise tonight because you know that you were messed up, but God still saved you? You know you were dysfunctional, but God still saved you? Somebody ought to give God the praise here tonight. Okay, so here's your experience. But, but here it is, here it is. Uh, 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 that was our experience, but God gave us endowments. God gave us gift. We're back in Ephesians chapter 2. Go ahead, turn to your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. The Bible says, but God, verse 4, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Now watch this. Uh, God is telling us that as messed up as you were, I loved you. That's our experience now. We were messed up, we were jacked up, but God loved us. God what? Now this is not the same kind of love that we often feel, warm feelings and infatuation. This is a love that continues to express itself despite the fact that it's involved with people who God can't trust. People who God can't depend on. People who will run out on him the first chance they get. Uh, but God looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. Somebody say, beyond our faults and sees our needs. 
So he loved us. But secondly, he liberated us. He did what? I'm talking about our experience now. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, God has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. That word quickened means literally, listen to me, look at me now, look at me. God saw how dead you were and he brought you back to life. That's that word quickened. God made you alive even when you were dead in your sins. Oh God. Malgré ton son péché oye. Malgré ta mourir dans péché, l'Éternel animé ou libère la vie éternelle pendant ta mourir dans péché. Qui est-ce qui dit amen à soi? Okay, so here it is, here it is. So first of all, he loved us. Secondly, he liberated us. Somebody say he liberated us. But watch this. The third thing he did, he not only liberated us, but he lifted us. He did what? He what? Verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Somebody say he raised us. Okay, so watch this. He loved us. He liberated us, but then he lifted us. Somebody say, he lifted us. Okay, okay. Um, I need you to understand, you are not in Bethany tonight. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Okay, y'all not feeling me, y'all not feeling me. Um, let me see how I can make this live. It is easy to run a race if you already know you finished it. This is how the believer runs the Christian race. Not from the start line, but from the finish line. Why? Because, ooh, this, is how, this is how Christ works. Jesus ran the race before us, and he crossed the finish line. And because he crossed the finish line, God has credited to your account the victory that Jesus has gained. Okay, right. <clears throat> Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can help you here. Uh, it, it, it is the equivalent, listen to me, of being told by the bank, go ahead to the ATM, stick your card in, and take out whatever it is you want because the funds have already been provided. Jesus. Now, the reason that should make some of y'all jump is because I know, amen, I don't even have to guess that some of y'all got some bad credit. Am I preaching right? Somebody's credit score in here is not 700. They're not even 600. Am I preaching right? Some of us have made some bad decisions in regards to our credit. I know some of y'all are looking down right now. I don't want to look at the pastor. I don't want him to know. I know your credit ain't so good. How do I know? Because there was a time my credit wasn't good neither. I came out of college. Amen. I was in college. I had no job, but I had a credit card. You know that's a trap, right, from the enemy? That's a trap of the devil to put you in debt. Amen. And so I spent money that I did not have. And because my parents were not rich, amen, I had to pay back those loans and I didn't have the money to pay them back and my credit fell. But here it is, as a believer in Jesus, God has resources that he allows you to spend based on what Jesus has already been given. I feel like preaching here tonight. So the victory is mine, not because I crossed the finish line, but because Jesus crossed the finish line. Are you following me? So here it is. When I'm running the race, the reason I get up and finish is because I've already crossed the finish line. Why have I crossed the finish line? Because the Bible teaches that when I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, whatever he has, I have. Whatever he is, I am. And so although I'm a sinner, that's why the Bible calls me a saint because I've been credited with the character of Jesus Christ. Let me bless somebody here tonight. You know what grace is? God calling you saved and sanctified. God calling you holy even when you're still a mess. God calling you a saint when you still have sinner's problems. Because watch this. The Bible says we're seated with him in heavenly realms. Parce que Jésus dans le ciel là, nous avons tant accès dans le ciel là. Qui est-ce qui dit Amen à soi? Parce que Jésus chita beaucoup de papa là, moi même j'ai tant chita beaucoup de papa me tout. Et pas vrai bien aimé? Parce que n'importe ça que Jésus gagne, par la foi dans Jésus et grâce à Jésus-Christ, nous recevons même bagaille. Qui est-ce qui dit Amen à soi? Okay, I said he loved us, he liberated us and he what? 
he lifted us. Okay, let, let, let me finish this teaching. Uh, the Bible says, watch this, he loved us, liberated us, and lifted us. The Bible tells us at the very moment that you're seated right here in this church, you're seated with him in the heavenly realm. So watch this. I begin to enjoy heaven before I get there. Okay, you know the hymn that says, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. C'est pour ça moi-même rejeter théologie qui dit mon cap servi bon Dieu pour toujours pauvre parce que pas gain la pauvreté dans le ciel. Me suppose commencer goûter le ciel pendant ma vie ici, et pas vrai bien aimé. Me te mettre pas gain toute richesse yo, mais gain de richesse m'a gain parce que c'est petit bon Dieu mien. Qu'est-ce qui dit amen à soir? This is why I reject poverty theology that tells me that there's some kind of nobility and holiness in being poor. The devil is a liar. The Bible says that God will take the wealth of the wicked and give it unto the righteous. The Bible says the cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. If my father owns it all, whatever is my father's is mine. Can I preach right here? I reject the theology that teaches us that we have to have the least of everything and we have to have the worst of everything and we have to have hand-me-downs. I'm not a, I don't serve a hand-me-down God. I serve a God who's able to give me some new stuff. Can anybody say some new stuff? Pourquoi ça c'est malfecteur seulement qui coule qui roule belle machine? Pourquoi ça c'est malfecteur seulement qui pour vivre dans belle caille? Pourquoi ça c'est malfecteur seulement petit yo ka gen éducation? Est-ce que c'est pas petit wa nou et tout? Donc petit pam ka gen belle éducation, petit pam ka roule belle machine, moi même ka habiter dans belle caille parce que papa c'est wallier. Qu'est-ce qui dit amen à soi? Can you receive that here tonight? You're not mediocre, you're not average, you're not less than. You don't have to have hand-me-downs and leftovers. We serve a God who's able to give us new stuff. Somebody say some new stuff. Some of y'all need a new car. Come on, give God some praise for that right there. Somebody need a new house, amen. Somebody needs a new boo-boo. Can I preach here tonight? God is giving some new stuff here tonight. All right, let me, let me finish this thing. I can't stay right there. Watch this, watch this. He loved us. He lifted us. He liberated us. And watch this. We enjoy the benefits and the foretaste of glory divine. Now, here it is. How does God accomplish this? How does God accomplish this work of sanctification? The first way he does it is through faith. Somebody say through faith. Okay, um, let me give you this text. Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace are you saved through faith. Through what? Okay. My dear, it's not about what you can see. It's about what you can believe. We're walking by sight. But the Bible says the just shall live by Okay, now listen, listen. Let me help you. Let me help you here. There's a difference, and especially with you energetic churches where y'all worship hard. One of the challenges in your relationship with God is too much of your standing with God and the way you feel about you and God is based on how you feel and not your faith. Et c'est pour ça, nous obligez tout le temps à pomper pour sentir que vous sauvez. But you cannot live life feeling saved. You have to live life knowing and having faith that you are saved. Okay, listen. If I ask you tonight, are you saved? What should be your response to me? Yes. When are you saved? Now. When? When are you saved? Now. The moment you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you're saved. Now, watch this. Sometimes you don't feel saved. Can I preach right here? Okay, can I just be honest? I don't always feel pastoral. Sometimes I feel like a Negro. Get a little lemon de respect. I'm to pass with the father of the church. Côté pas de aucun jeu qu'à regarder. Je dis l'éternel, excusez-moi. Parce que je ne suis pas toujours senti me sauver. Je suis bien aimé, m'énervé. Can I just be honest? See, y'all don't, like, y'all don't like the preacher to be honest. Sometimes we get upset. 
Can I preach to somebody here who's ever been upset? Who's ever been annoyed? Especially when someone who you know you've treated well and now they're treating you like trash? Somebody who used to eat at your house? Wear your clothes? Come on, they didn't know how to put two colors together. They was wearing brown and banana yellow when they first came here. And now all of a sudden they done gotten so big for themselves they don't know how, and people get disrespectful. Can I preach right here to... Can, can, can you just be honest that sometimes the saints of God get disrespectful? And you feel like you, you don't really feel saved right now? Okay, may, maybe some of y'all, that's too good for y'all. Let me, let me come down your street. Have you ever been in your room and got a certain unction that you knew was not of God? You started having R. Kelly moments where your mind was telling you no. But your body, am I preaching right? When that phone call came and you knew what that phone call was about, when that I am showed up or when that Facebook, you know, you know what I'm talking about. When the desires came in and kicked in and you didn't feel saved. But in that moment, you've got to understand right there and right then you are saved because you're not saved by feelings. You're saved by faith. Is there anybody that believes the word of God? That's why you got to look at that telephone and talk to that telephone. I declare telephone. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I'm saved by grace through faith. I believe God. Is there anybody here that has ever had to believe God for a hold you anointing? Lord, hold me so I don't pick up this phone. Lord, hold me so I don't return this text. Lord, hold me so I don't go to that bedroom tonight. Because it can't be your feeling, it has to be faith. Somebody say faith. faith. It has to be your belief in what God has done, your belief in what God is doing. Listen to me, sometimes feelings will fail you, but faith, come on, somebody say faith. Say, Lord, I've got a maladie, I've declared a maladie, I'm not going to die. Somebody say faith. God does everything in your life, listen to me, through faith. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 11, without faith. It is impossible. Okay, I got to stay here one more time. I got I to stay right here in this moment. Don't rely on your feelings. Feelings change. Je dis, on a senti ou gain force. Demain, on peut te mettre pas senti ou pas gain. C'est pour ça, on pas mettre, on pas mettre confiance sur nos émotions. On pas mettre confiance sur la parole de l'éternel. La foi dans Jésus. Est-ce qu'on l'a vraiment bien aimé? So watch this, even when I can't see it, I can faith it. When I can't touch it, I can faith it. When they tell me it won't happen, I still believe it because whose report shall I believe? I believe the report of the Lord. Yo dim haïtien pou ko jam fè sa, mwen 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 kwè nan bon Dieu. Li pou ko jam manifeste nan fami m, mwen 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 kwè nan bon Dieu. Yo di l'église sa pou ko jam fèt nan l'église, mwen 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 kwè nan bon Dieu. Konmye moun la ki kwè nan bon Dieu aswè? Okay, watch this. Faith. He does it by faith. Somebody say by faith. By faith. Okay. He also does it, watch this, uh, through, watch this, uh, special favor. Somebody say special favor. The Bible says, verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 8, Ephesians 2, verse 8, that not of yourselves, uh, it is the gift of God. Somebody say the gift of God. Okay, l let me free you, my brother. One of the challenges that we have in our walk with God, listen to me, is that we're trying to earn what God freely gives. Nous toujours à essayer bien aimé pour nous faire un jeu pour bon Dieu qu'a fait pour nous. Comme s'il était doué au ça. Nous pas travailler pour bon Dieu parce que nous besoin bon Dieu fait pour nous. Nous travaillons pour bon Dieu parce qu'il déjà fait pour nous. Est-ce qu'on l'a fait bien aimé? Stop trying to earn it. See some of y'all, oh God help me. You trying to be good so you can prove to God look how good I am. Here's the problem, your righteousness is filthy rags. It will never be good enough. Stop trying to earn it. Just receive it. Somebody say, just receive it. What's your voile? If I been in it, stop trying to earn it. Just receive it. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, stop trying to earn it. Just receive it. Okay, okay. Now watch this. 
So I said first, we get it through faith. Second, through special favor. Third, he accomplishes it through his blood. Somebody say through his blood. Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are drawn nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, bien aimé, l'éternel paye prix pour le gagner. God has literally bought you back. Okay, this is a word that means redeem. Somebody say redeem. To redeem something is to purchase it back. Let nous te péché, nous vendons nous dans mes satan. Satan dit qu'on a, c'est propriétaire de l'humanité. I own humanity because I bought them. They gave themselves to me. They took the fruit of the tree, and because they took the fruit of the tree, they gave me dominion. They gave me authority. Jesus said, okay, I love them, and I've got to save them. How will I get them back? So Jesus said, watch this, because, amen, the wages of sin is death. I'm going to die. I'm going to shed my blood. I'm going to pay the debt, and I'm going to buy them back. Somebody say, buy them back. Jésus racheté nous dans mes Satan, li acheté nous avec sang qui était versé sous bois cavel. Qui est-ce qui reçoit la parole ça à soi? That means ladies and gentlemen, you are not cheap because the blood of Jesus was paid on your behalf. I feel like preaching here tonight. I know I must be somebody because Jesus shed his blood in order to get me back. The devil thought he had me. The devil thought he owned me. But Jesus said, no, 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 my brother. You don't own them because I shed my blood. And if it does not fit, you must acquit. I feel like preaching right there. What Jesus did, he presented incontrovertible evidence that the debt for my sins has already been paid and one whereas once I was guilty now I'm declared not guilty is there anybody here that can celebrate tonight that Jesus has brought you back and so you are not guilty somebody ought to say amen here tonight all right let me finish this up I, 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 I gotta go I gotta go it's in the word finally watch this he accomplishes our self sanctification I said ladies and gentlemen first he did it uh, through faith Second, through special favor. Third, through his blood. But lastly, through his work. Through his what? Work. Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship. Now here it is, here it is, here it is. Bon Dieu, pas j'aime sauver ou pour laguer ou. Depuis le fin sauver, nous commençons à travailler avec ou. La pluté avec ou. C'est pas vrai Li rete bon kote ou, li pa jam abandone ou. Li mache ave ou. Li pale ave ou. Li protege ou. E pa vre? God walks with you. He talks with you. He protects you. Because when God saves you, he doesn't just leave you on your own. You become part of his family. You become adopted into the family of God. And God makes himself responsible for everything that happens to you. Okay, some of y'all, y'all still not here. Uh, let, let's go to the scriptures. The Lord is... My shepherd. I what? All right? In other words, he takes care of everything that I need. I'm going to walk you through this text now. He maketh me to? Where? In? Oh, God. He does what? He restores my? Uh, by the way, that's when the shepherd would go to the sheep after they were bruised and apply the oil of anointing to heal their wounds. He restores my soul. He leads me where? In the paths of what? For what? His what? Now here it is, here it is. Yay! Oh, you missed it. You, you missed your shouting moment. Yay, though I... Stop. Yay, though I walk... Stop. Yay, though I walk... There's a word of revelation here tonight. This is God's promise to you that you're not going to the valley, you're going through the valley. Can I bless somebody here tonight? And whatever God takes you through, God will take you... Whatever God takes you to, God will take you. Whatever God takes you what? To, he'll take you. But watch what he said. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the... Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not death. It's just a shadow. I feel like preaching here tonight. God never said that you were going to die in the valley... The devil is just manipulating light in the valley because shadows are not real. They're just manipulations of light. You've got to tell the devil, I know what this is. This is not real. It's just a shadow. 
Tell the robber it's just a shadow. Tell the mugger it's just a shadow. Tell the rapist it's just a shadow. You may attack me, but you cannot defeat me because yea, though I walk through the valley. Okay, watch this. Of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no. Why? For thou art, oh God. In other words, the reason I'm not afraid is because I got backup. Somebody say I got backup. In other words, I got a crew that runs behind me. If you run up on me, you're going to catch a bad one. I feel like preaching here tonight. If you try to mess with me, I've got divine security. Can I preach it here tonight? I've got angels watching over me. Some of y'all know the Bible. L'ange de l'éternel, camp autour de ce qu'il est créé, et qui ça et les a rache au danger. Can I preach here tonight? Listen, listen. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art what? Thy rod and thy staff. If I had time, I would tell you that the rod, amen, and the staff are two tools at God's disposal in order to secure you while you're in the valley of the shadow of death. The staff is to gently corral you when you fall out of line and pull you back in line. Is there anybody here that ever went to do something crazy and you felt the hand of God pulling you back in line? You were getting ready to go to that party and something happened and all of a sudden you didn't go and then you got the news that somebody was stabbed at that party? That's the staff. You almost dated him. You almost, amen, took him to your house and then the Lord made something happen. That relationship fell through and then you found out he had about three or four girls pregnant around town. That was the staff. Am I preaching right? You almost, amen, gave her that wedding ring, brother. You almost made her your wife, and then you found out, Jesus, go, nigga. You know, she ain't dealing with no bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, the young people got that. Parents, y'all not here yet. Nobody go throw this out. They heard it. They heard it. That was subliminal, subliminal. She ain't dealing with no bro. No bro. Okay. Yeah, right, right, right. So, so that was the staff, right? Sassy. That's the right. Ta roulette. Et ton bâton, roulette là, c'est pour épargner au de danger. Mais bâton, c'est pour le régler avec vacabon. Can I preach it tonight? The staff is for your is your provision, but the rod is for your protection because sometimes while you're walking through the valley, that's where there are mountain lions in the valley. Yeah, yeah. that's where there are scavengers who want to hunt in the valley but God says the rod and staff they protect you amen then here it is this is the blessing thou preparest a table before me in the presence Jesus not behind their back but in their presence tu dresses devant moi une table en face de mes adversaires est-ce qu'on peut bénir can I bless you tonight some of you have been complaining about your enemies. What you don't understand is your ability to eat at the table is connected to your enemies at the table as well. If you did not have your enemies, you might not have a table. God connects your ability to be prosperous to the presence of your enemies. He does it while they watch so he can show them that he's able to preserve his own even while the enemy, I feel like preaching. I want to bless somebody here tonight. Amen. God says, I'll bless you in the presence. Somebody say in the presence. That allows you to look at your enemy in the face while they watch you eat. They were invited to the party, but they were not invited to eat. They were invited to watch you eat. Yo vin na fête là oui, mais yo pa vin manger, c'est gade yo vin gade yo. Parce que bon Dieu qu'on fait bagaille comme ça, li éviter ennemi en vin gade yo pendant wap béni. That prepare us a table before me in the Watch this. But then it gets even more stupid. That will anoint is my head with oil. Tu en dis ma tête et ma coupe de bord. You anoint my head with oil while I'm seated at the table with my enemies. Why? Because God says, I need you to remain cool, calm, and collected while your enemies are trying to destroy you. So I'll anoint your head with a mentality. That's why I'm anointing your head. So I can give you a mentality that allows you to remain calm while your enemies are acting crazy. But not only that, the blessing that I give you will continue to run over 
Okay, let me bless you here tonight. The little kid fishing, watching his dad fish. Every time the dad catches a big fish, the dad throws it back. Little boy start getting upset. What the heck is going on here? We wasting our time. All these big fish, you throwing them back. Then the daddy caught a little fish. The daddy grabbed the fish and he started going home. Little boy, wait a minute, daddy. You threw back all those big fishes and you're going to take this little fish? What's up with that? Well, son, the frying pan I have at home is yay big. If I caught a big fish, I wouldn't be able to fry it. And the reason why some of y'all are so miserable is because the frying pan of your life is only so small, you can't accommodate the big blessing. But God is trying to tell you, watch this. The reason I keep pouring into your cup and letting it run over is so I can let you know I've always got more in the pitcher than you can handle in the cup. I anoint your head with oil. Your cup does what? Surely goodness and mercy, what they do? Watch this. Even when you're trying to run away from the goodness of God, the mercies and the goodness of God are tracking you down like a bloodhound. You can't run away from the mercy of God parce que depuis l'Éternel sauvé le bonheur et la grâce la la capable. Qu'est-ce qu'il dit amen à soi? Le bonheur et la grâce m'a comparé combien jours? Tous les jours de ma Okay, watch this. So I said to you ladies and gentlemen that during this work of sanctification, God makes himself responsible for you and everything that happens to you. He's responsible for your finances. He's responsible for your marriage. He's responsible for your happiness. He's responsible for your career. He's responsible for your joy. He's responsible for your schooling. Everything that concerns you is in the hand of Almighty God. Do you receive that word here tonight? Okay, and I'm bless you. I'm gonna bless you now. So we're talking about sanctification. We'll bring it to a close. Watch this. And I said to you, he makes himself responsible through his work. He's working on you. You are his workmanship. So watch this. Pastor, how does God do his work? Threefold. I'm going to give you these three and then we're done. The first thing that God does when he's working on you is that he excavates. Somebody say excavate. Okay, so watch this. The first work of God is the work of excavation. So let me give you one before that. Evaluation and then excavation. God looks at you where you are and what you have going on. He evaluates you. He sums you up, sees all the different areas of your life. And then, because he's building you up, he has to excavate. There are things in your life that God has to remove before he can add. Nous toujours besoin bon Dieu ajouter, mais avant l'Éternel ajouter, il y a d'autres bagages pour le retirer. Parce que si bon Dieu t'a commencé à bâtir sous la vie, Jean y est là. La construit un bagage, mais parce que la fondation n'est pas grondé, car la tombé. Are you following me here tonight? God says, I can't build on your life until I excavate out of your life. Because if I build on the faulty foundation of your life, your life will fall apart. Some of you, listen to me, you want God to build his work on the junk of your life. And God says, I can't do that. The first thing I got to do is remove some things. Ooh, I got to remove some friends. I got to remove some habits. I got to remove some confidants. I got to remove some lovers. I got to remove some addictions. I got to remove you out of comfortable spaces. En pile nous, nous trouvons confortable pour bon Dieu bénir nous. Et l'on confortable comme ça, ou pas v'le bénédiction l'éternel. Parce que pour l'éternel, il y a pour le béni ou pour le bouleverser ou. Sometimes for God to bless you, he's got to disturb you. Come here, young lady. For some of you, you too cute for your own good. The Lord may have to take you through a season of not looking so cute. For some of y'all, it's about your looks. It ain't about your character. You look good, but your heart is rotten. You talk sweet milk, but you 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 li- you talk sweet milk, but you live in sour cream. And God says, in order for me to build on your life, I've got to strip it away. Listen to me. Some of y'all are too popular to be blessed. You always got people around you, supporting you and applauding you and celebrating you and lying to you. Some of y'all, the worst thing you got going on in your life is a whole bunch of Negroes and Negresses who are always telling you how wonderful you are. 
Les gens qui toujours parlent, qui ont toujours des belles paroles dans les oreilles, ou qui sont tellement merveilleux, les gens qui sont menti à bas. Et que l'on peut l'éternel béni, ou est obligé de déplacer les gens. Pour qu'ils ont des voiles. Can I preach it tonight? Sometimes to hear God's voice, God has got to freeze you in isolation. Are you listening to me? Because the first thing God does is evaluate. The second thing he does is excavate. Somebody say excavate. Okay, the last thing, watch this. The last thing that God does, watch this, is that after he excavates, the next thing he does is that he erects. He begins to build up. Somebody say build up. Until God tears you down, God cannot build you up. You will lose some things. You will lose friends. You will lose money. You will lose position. You will lose prominence. You will lose stature. You may even lose family. But God says, when I strip you down, that's when I'm ready to build you up. Somebody say, build you up. Well, pastor, how does God build us up? I'm coming to the end of the message now. He develops your character. He deserves what? He begins to develop your integrity. He begins to cause you to walk in obedience and discipline. Somebody say discipline. Let me tell you something. You could be gifted. If you ain't got discipline, you ain't going nowhere. If you don't learn how to get up and do it every single day, study every day, prepare every day, work hard every day. Some of you are too lazy to be blessed. You want God to do it like this. Just wave his finger and wave his hand and bat his eye. And God said, I don't operate like that. You got to get up early in the morning and go to work. Somebody say, go to work. Stop mooching off of other people and get your own. Somebody say, get your own. Get you a job. Brothers, listen, you want some respect? Get a job. Women do not respect Negroes who ain't got no paper. Am I preaching right? And sisters, amen. You don't want no brother in your house who's lounging up in the place. He don't got no job. You coming home after working, you an ephemia, because you know the Haitian brothers love that ephemia, right? You working hard out here, you a RN, you coming home, and this joker's on the couch watching TV flip. The devil is a liar. Get your lazy hips up and go get a job. Amen. Somebody say work. work. Discipline. Study. Prayer. Fasting. That's another word we don't like. Fast. Turn over the plate. Tell God, you know what? I'm not going to eat today because I want to focus on you. Fasting. Jeûne et la prière. Qu'est-ce que tu amènes à soi? Okay, watch this. So watch this. You got to work. Amen. Are you here? He does the work. You got, he builds you up through working. He builds your character. He builds integrity. He builds discipline. Watch this. Watch this. The text also tells us that, watch this, God builds your maturity and submission. He builds up your family. He builds up your neighborhood. You become sanctified as you become a product of his grace, his workmanship. That's why the Bible begins to call you a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people that you may show forth the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light. God wants to work on you. Okay, now here it is. This is the last question I want to ask, and then I'm done. I'm releasing you tonight. Pastor, I heard everything that you said, but when I look at my life, the things that you're talking about, I have yet to see manifested. Ça veut dire, moi, nous avons des déclarations, mais beaucoup de manifestations. Pasteur, pour qui ça bagaille, ça ne peut pas manifester? Mes réponses là. Parce que bon Dieu, il faut qu'on finisse le travail là pour faire dans nous-mêmes. Non. God is not finished, he's still working. Okay, let me bless you here tonight. Some of us, want to run and leave because the promises have not yet been fulfilled. But you've got to understand, the work is not finished. What God has started, God is still working on. And listen to me, tonight, you've got to declare, God, I know I'm not what I'm supposed to be yet, but I believe you're still working on me. manifesté, même parce que bon Dieu pas jamais la bataille. N'importe ça que bon Dieu commencé, qu'on est que bon Dieu a fini. Qu'est-ce qu'il recevra la soirée? Okay, let me encourage you tonight. Stop assessing yourself based on what you believe to be the finished work. God is not finished yet. And stop judging people based on what you see because the fact is, God is not finished yet. You're still broken, but God is not finished yet. 
You have some addictions, but God is not finished yet. You struggle with lying, but God is not finished yet. You're struggling with pornography, but God is not finished yet. You're still struggling with hypocrisy, but God is not finished yet. You're struggling with idolatry, but God is not finished yet. You're struggling with homosexuality, but God is not finished yet. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is not finished yet. Bonjour, poco fini avec ça a commencé à connaître la fin. La manifester. Qui est-ce qui veut se voir la soirée? Qui est-ce qui veut se voir la parole de la soirée? I'm closing. I'm done. I'm done. Parents qui sont dans la salle. Les gens qui sont dans la salle. Je ne sais pas que nous sommes. Pas abandonner. Bon, je peux finir avec vous. Nous sommes jugés. Oh! Ils ne sont pas holy. Yo pas sanctifié. Yo pas la crainte de l'Éternel. Tant tes jeunes, ou t'es la crainte de l'Éternel ou même. À peine nous fait convertir là, l'année dernière on converti. Bon Dieu pour qu'on finir avec yo. Don't write off the young people. God is not finished with them yet. They're still young. God is at work. Somebody ought to say amen. Whoever you are, don't give up on yourself because God is not finished with you yet. He's still working on you. Be encouraged tonight. God is going to finish what he started. God has declared that you're his workmanship, you're his work of art, you're his masterpiece. There's no way he's not going to finish the job. Too many people are watching. God is not going to leave himself to be embarrassed. God is going to finish what he started. Whatever he started, he's going to finish. Who receives the word of God here tonight? Who can clap your hands and declare, I believe that God is going to finish what he started. When the power of the Lord comes, the Lord finishes the work. I believe God tonight. Go ahead and give God some praise in this house tonight. He's going to finish it. He started it. He's going to finish it. So tonight, your eyes are closed and your heads are bowed and you're standing on your feet as we close the service. That song. What are y'all playing? Yeah, yeah, I love that right there. Till I overflow, I wanna run home. Say, fill me up, fill me. Till I, I wanna run. Say it again, fill me up. Fill me till I overflow. One more time. Say, fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. Listen tonight. There's somebody here. You haven't seen what God is doing yet. You're waiting to see the accomplishment. You're, you're struggling because God is not finished yet. And sometimes you feel like giving up. But tonight you heard the word of God. And you believe that God is going to finish what he started in you. And you want to say tonight, God, take me. Get a hold of me and finish the work that you promised. God, I need you to love me. I need you to liberate me and I need you to lift me tonight. God, evaluate me. Excavate in me and then erect in me what you're trying to build. God, finish what you started. If that's you tonight, you need God to finish what he started in you. You need God to transform you and make you what he said he was going to do in your life. Somebody here, you're struggling to finish school, but you know that God called you to go to school and you believe that what God has started, he will finish. God called you to a ministry, but you become discouraged, but you want to believe God to finish what he started. God called you into a marriage and that marriage is in trouble and you believe that God is going to fix what he started. If that's you tonight, I'm inviting you to slip out into the aisle, make your way to the altar. 
and tell God you believe that he's going to finish what he started. Maybe you're wrestling with some issues in your life. Maybe you're wrestling with some addictions tonight and you want to say, God, I need you to finish what you started. I need you to give me a breakthrough. I need you to give me some healing. I need you to give me some deliverance. If that's you tonight, slip into this aisle. Make your way down to this altar tonight. Si c'est vous même ça, ouvrez l'éternel fini, on va commencer dans la vie. Peut-être que c'est son maladie qu'il te dit t'as guéri ou pourquoi ouais guérison, mais assoie ou quoi, bon Dieu. Déplacez qui te côtoie là. Vin devant l'hôtel, la vin là au devant l'éternel. Dis l'éternel, moi quoi par où l'assoie. Ça on te commence à, moi qu'on est ouais fini l'assoie. Si c'est vous même ça, déplacez. Vin là au devant mon Dieu, assoie. Dis l'éternel, moi quoi ou pourquoi jambes menti. Ça on te dit ouais faire, moi qu'on est ouais fini le net allé. Ça a commencé à me connaître, à me manifester. Si c'est vous même ça, à soi, venez. Venez la gueule. Venez la gueule dans mes éternels. Venez la gueule bagarre dans mes éternels. Relation intime dans la famille. Petit yo. Venez la gueule devant l'éternel. Dis l'éternel. Petit tout devant moi, ou devant même pour l'entrer dans la vie éternelle. Je ne pas la gueule dans mes Satan. Je ne à soi, à travail où tu commencé à me connaître, à finir dans le nom de Jésus. Quand tu es à soi, à tonight, tell God, God, I believe you for my brother. I believe you for my sister who's out there, but I know you're going to bring them back into the household of faith because what you started, you're able to finish. I believe you for my cousins. I believe you for my family. I believe you for my friends. I believe you for myself. I know that you're going to finish what you started. Where are you tonight? I know you're still working. Come and lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I want to run oh, over. Fill me up till I overflow. Till I overflow, I want. Say it one more time. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up, fill me up till I, till I overflow. Last time, till I overflow, I want to run a hole. Grab the person's hand next to you. <clears throat> I come to encourage you tonight that the work that God has begun in you, God is going to perform it. He's not a man that he should lie. And if he said it, he will do it. Don't be overwhelmed by the enormity of the job. God never starts anything that he's not capable of finishing. Connaissez bon Dieu comment c'est bagala. Li kon ki jan pou al fini la soir. Pas découragé. Pas découragé. Malgré le poko manifester retenir la vini. God is never too early. He's never too late, but he's always right on time. And so receive God's word tonight. Receive the miracle tonight. We're praying, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We're standing at the altar tonight, God, because we believe you and take you at your word. Our response to your grace is to live a sanctified life. And God, the work that you have begun in us, you're going to finish it. God, you already started it by looking at our experience. You knew who we were when you found us. You knew who we were when you called us, but you didn't let that disqualify us. You said in your word that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that we could ask or think. Nous pas capables jamais imaginer ça ta pas le faire avec nous. Nous on bel travail, on merveille côté commencer et nous quoi à soi à merveille ça faut accomplir net aller. Father God, we believe you that what you start, you're able to finish. 
You don't never take on a job that you're not able to perform. You don't never start nothing that you're not able to work out. And so tonight we know in Jesus' name, we believe it by faith. We receive it because of the shedding of your blood. We believe, God, that what you have started, you are able to accomplish tonight. We believe, God, that you're not going to leave us halfway. You're not going to start us down the road only to turn your back. But if you started with us, you're going to finish with us. If you began it, you're going to end it. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. And so we believe you in here tonight. We know that the devil cannot keep us from becoming what you want us to be. Sata bago ken puissance sou nou parce que ou même ou gen toute puissance là. C'est ou même qui toro, c'est ou même qui gen toute force là. Et n'importe ça commencer ou gen force suffisamment pour finir la soirée. Nous croyons dans parole ou. Nous croyons déclaration qui sorti dans bouche ou. Ça que tu fais dans Jésus, nous connaissons pour accomplir dans nous-mêmes. La grâce c'est pour nous, puissance c'est pour nous, onction c'est pour nous, délivrance c'est pour nous. N'a pas arrivé, n'a pas accompli, n'a pas réussi, n'a pas triomphé. Nous qu'a chanté à soi pour triompher dans les combats. Quelle est notre force ici bas C'est la parole du Seigneur. Nous croyons à soi, nous croyons à Dieu. We believe your word, we believe your declaration. We we believe in your power. We believe in your spirit. Do it tonight in the name of Jesus. We believe you tonight. So do it in the name of Jesus. Heal in the name of Jesus. Deliver in the name of Jesus. Bless in the name of Jesus. Restore in the name of Jesus. Open doors in the name of Jesus. Nous recevons guérison au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons transformation au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons sanctification au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons justification au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons le salut au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons que problème nous résoudent au nom de Jésus. Crise de gérer au nom de Jésus. Fardeau enlevé au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons soulagement au nom de Jésus. Nous recevons la soie. Mais nous lever au nom de Jésus pour nous recevoir la soie. We lift our hands tonight to receive it in the name of Jesus. We know it is done in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Let the people of God say amen and say it again and say it again. Commencez par mais recevoir la soie. Au nom de Jésus. 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 Recevoir, 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 recevoir. Recevoir, recevoir, recevoir. Recevoir la soie. Au nom de Jésus, au nom de Jésus, au nom de Jésus. Dans le grand nom de Jésus. Amen.